Hamas wants to destroy the state of Israel. What are we talking about here? And anybody who takes side, uh, their side is participating in their crime. Okay, there's one more subreddit related email that I wanted to go through. Especially as the subreddit explodes in people, we have to make sure that the culture stays okay. So I try to like maintain. <clears throat> Hi, Mr. Tiny, sorry for schizo, but I think there's a real problem with concluding going on in the subreddit in regards to this protester slash Jewish students and library thing going on in New York. Sorry if you already talked about this on stream. I haven't watched the past couple of days. Here are the threats in question. And it's the Jewish students at Cooper Union in New York. Hide in library as pro-Palestine protesters pound on doors. And New York City Council Ina Vernikov about the Jewish students who barricaded themselves in the library while pro-Palestinians were violently banging the doors and trying to globalize the Intifada from New York to Gaza. I will say, though, um, that one of the... I thought it was weird. I think I said this when we saw this on Twitter. I did think it was weird that the video clip was like six seconds long. It is six seconds long. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I don't know if there's like justification or, but remember when they're short video clips, you do always want more context, of course, but okay. What does this guy have to say? I'll fully admit that the video in the first thread 100% looks scary. It sounds like it could be the case that protesters are trying to kick down the doors to attack Jewish students. However, the video is literally six seconds long and we can't even see what the protesters are doing. We can only hear them. People in that first thread are running wild with the narrative that this was a group of leftoid dipshits literally trying to lynch or at least specifically harass Jewish students. We really had no information though. There was chanting and banging at the door. There were Jewish students on the other side. There are so many explanations for this. We simply did not have remotely enough information at the time to know what was going on. Later contact showed that they were chanting all over the building and banging on lots of things, but we still have very little evidence regarding specific targeting. Mm, maybe, okay. That seems to be, that's a very, very, very cautious position, but maybe. I think the number one best thing you talk about is taking a second to breathe, wait for information to come out, and never jump to conclusions, no matter how much we dislike the people involved, but looking at this, it doesn't seem like people in the sub are doing that at all. Here's just a small sample of comments that seem to be without any supporting evidence whatsoever. And the comment he links is one saying, expel every one of those protesters. Expel everyone for what? We didn't see what they did and had almost no contact with what was going on. They're accusing university leadership of condoning it. Again, no evidence to support it. Okay, all right. Huh. There you go. That was that guy's criticism of you guys. What was the actual story for this when everything came out? Okay, Picasso, I unmuted you. Chill. Oh, I don't even know how to unmute you. Is it a mute or a ban? There, I unbanned you. Good luck. Eddie Valentine, 499. Destiny, can we come to your support tonight for the Texas Rangers in game one of the World Series? I'm always supporting Texas Ranger, Walker. New York City officials shared new details Thursday about the heated rally at Cooper Union College that led to some tense moments between students at the library. A number of pro-Israel students reported feeling unsafe as pro-Palestinian students rallied outside the library where they were studying. Videos show a group of Jewish students inside the library as others chanted, free Palestine, and held up signs outside the locked glass doors. School officials asked us to be there. Police were there from start to finish. One NYPD official explained Thursday morning, for about roughly 10 minutes, they were banging on the doors of the library and banging on some transparent windows that you see in the library. From that point, the protesters left. The incident followed an early rally at Cooper Plaza where pro-Israel students held up enlarged signs of kidnapped Israelis and pro-Palestinian students uh, crossed... Or, and pro-Palestinian students across the way held up signs demanding the institution support Palestinian causes. A represent representative for Cooper Union said the library was closed for approximately 20 minutes in the late afternoon, and a number of students chose to stay in the library until the later protest was over. The NYPD stressed the students were not barricaded inside, adding that the college asked officers to be on campus in plain clothes. In plain clothes, a policy the department is going to reconsider moving forward. Students representing the pro-Palestinian rally sent CBS New York a statement that read in part, We, students at Cooper Union, 
planned a peaceful protest to demand our institution's acknowledgement of the Israeli apartheid. This was in response to the school's one-sided stance and participation in the occupation of Palestine. We planned to peacefully protest outside the building before walking in and continuing our protest outside the president's office. We concluded our protest by calling out our demands through the hallways on the, of the entire foundation building. When we reached the library, we were told that it was closed. We continued chanting outside the glass window of the library. Many different students of all backgrounds were in the library at the time. We would like to make it clear that our protest was not targeting any individual students or faculty, but the institution itself. We would like to reiterate that we do not, under any circumstance, condone anti-Semitism, and many members of the protest were Jewish. There you go. So they just randomly banged on the library doors. I mean, like, if there's a bunch of people protesting outside, they might, right? You just bang on shit. That's what people do, right? Um, and then also, just a quick reminder, um, do not, I love all of you so much, and I support all of your educational endeavors, do not, um, do not email me asking for help with anything in school. For interviews with projects, I'm sorry, I love you all, but it's just like way too much, um, it's just, I can't, I don't have the time commitment to do it, I'm so sorry. I love you all very much, okay? <clears throat> Destiny, fuck you, look at it. Oh, Picasso, I see. You've gotta stop spamming me. You have to stop spamming my name with links until I click them. You have to stop doing that. That's why you got muted in Kick Chat. Stop doing that. You're doing it, you used to do it in all three of my chats, okay? <laughs> stop doing it. Has Destiny given up games now that he's medicated? Uh, ever since I started taking drugs, I don't feel the desire to like play games while I research or watch stuff, which is nice. But I don't know if that'll change if I get used to them in the future. We'll see. But okay, um, let's watch Israel Hamas war. Hamas opened up the gates of hell. Masab Hassan Yusuf tells Piers Morgan. Initially, I okay. I think this was linked by a pro is or an Israeli dude in my chat. I kind of don't want to watch it because I'm already kind of leaning into like supporting Israel pretty like more and more the more research I do. So if I'm watching other videos, I'd like to watch things more from the pro-Palestinian side. Um, so I have a more balanced perspective, or at least I know the other arguments. But um, the, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, but the guy said that this dude was pro-Palestinian. So I don't know, we'll see, all right. He's a Hamas member, he's pro-Palestinian, sure. Okay, that's what Boonzi's saying, but. This was the longer clip of the protest. Can I bring this down here? There we go. Do you play games off stream? I don't have time for any of that right now, no. Why are they banging on the library? Seems kind of stupid, but okay, whatever. All right, watching this. And I'm joined now by Mossab uh, Hassan Youssef. Uh, Mossab, great to see you. Um, it's an extraordinary story, yours. Uh, you were the eldest son of a man who was one of the co-founders of Hamas. And indeed, for your early formative years, you worked alongside your, your father. So you got a great insight into Hamas. Tell me this from the start. What were the intended plans for Hamas when it was founded, when it started, when it developed? What was the plan? You know, since its establishment, uh, Hamas uh, uh, has one goal in mind, which is annihilating the state of Israel. Like the best, let's say, compromise that they could do is having a truce for 15 years, a ceasefire, for 15 years as maximum, you know, but with no guarantee how they will act after. It's absurd. Uh, it's not a secret that Hamas wants to destroy the state of Israel. They cannot accept Israel or accept uh, Israel's right to exist. What was the point uh, that you decided to get out of there, to, to flee this world, this environment you've been brought up in? 
You know, I, I have I have m many reasons. Since I was a child, I asked my father many questions about Hamas delusions, about their brutality, about their abuse of power. And always he justified, you know, their uh, position. Then I was imprisoned with Hamas. I spent about 27 months in Israeli prisons where Hamas was torturing their own members, our own people within Israeli prisons. They killed actually and tortured hundreds of prisoners. Uh, and this is when I start. Hamas tortured and killed hundreds of their own people inside Israeli prisons. That's a pretty. Uh, that's a pretty insane claim, Jesus. But okay. Asking myself the question: What if Hamas become the ruler at some point? What will they, they do? They were imprisoned too. No, I understand, but I'm just saying that like, if you were like running a prison, you've got a bunch of like Hamas people and they're like constantly killing, like that's a lot of people, but okay. To our people. And uh, many years later, Hamas became the ruler of Gaza. And uh, I wasn't surprised uh, by their br uh, brutality. When you heard what happened on October the 7th, what was your feeling about that? Look, as I told you, I'm not surprised by Hamas brutality. But I was surprised by the scale of their attack, you know, not to this degree, wiping out entire communities, you know, messing with a nuclear power, the most powerful country in the region, a country with a, a trauma, a great trauma from the past, with a, a memory of a Holocaust and uh, all the Nazis did in the past century. You, they opened uh, the gates of hell on the Palestinian people. This is how irresponsible this group people are. You know, that they are willing to actually sacrifice many Palestinian children, the entire Palestinian people, and use them as a fuel to just achieve their ideological uh, agendas, their religious agendas. They are careless. They are you meant to know when people are being truthful in interviews like this? Um, I think you just kind of have to have some background info. Um, and then the way people talk, I don't know how to, I don't know how to say that, but. Care for the human life. We have to separate between. I don't necessarily have enough background info to say whether this guy is truthful or not, but I don't think he said anything controversial up to this point that I haven't heard already. So. In what so-called Palestinian cause and Hamas cause. Hamas cause is a sick one. It's coming from the pit of hell, you know, and they need to be removed uh, from power. This is my message. As an ex-Hamas member, as a son of one of Hamas founders, that enough of this. If we don't stop them now, the next war is going to be deadlier. And only God knows what will happen next if Hamas is not finished as soon as possible. Well, so how many regular Palestinians particularly in Gaza, do you think sympathize with Hamas or indeed fully support them? You know, once Hamas is removed from power, we're going to witness people celebrating in Gaza. I guarantee you that. Mm. The people of Gaza- Also, why would he lie? It comes at tremendous risk to his own life. Isn't this guy in America now? I don't, like, I don't know if his life is at risk anymore. I could be wrong on that. ...are oppressed for so long and they had to endure, see- Can you fact check that claim, Destiny? Do they come from the pits of hell? <laughs> they had to endure violence, many wars, uh, uh, for the sake of Hamas uh, uh, lust for power and for Hamas political ambition. When this comes to an end, I promise you that the Palestinian people, first of all, will thank Israel for what they did. Second, the uh, idea of annihilating the Jews and the state of Israel will be that the Palestinian people, first of all, will thank Israel for what they did. Second, that seems like a pretty extreme claim, but maybe, uh, okay. The uh, idea of annihilating the Jews and the state of Israel will be dropped forever. You know, because Hamas is the, you can say, the last experiment uh, of uh, adapting violence, trying to annihilate and destroy the state of Israel. 
This didn't work for Yasser Arafat. It took him 40 years to realize this. And Hamas has been trying for 35 years to destroy Israel. Finally, I hope that they will come to this understanding that Israel is going nowhere. If they insist on annihilating Israel, and of course, if Iran keeps on insisting uh, on this goal, this means the destruction- Like how Iraqis cheered for America killing Saddam Hussein? Well, that's different, okay? Pretty sure there were a lot of Iraqis that were happy to see Saddam Hussein die, okay? That's not the same as this. ...of the entire region. This is the only uncertain outcome of this, because Israel is going nowhere. How do we get to peace from here? You know, this time, I'm afraid that war is the only way to peace. Uh, because if Hamas is not removed from power, uh, then they will uh, build more military, they will build uh, longer uh, range missiles, and the next attack, the next war is gonna be deadlier. The use of force is the last resort. You can find this in every culture. And unfortunately, now Hamas left Israel and the free world as well with no- Didn't his own people kill him? That was Gaddafi? I'm pretty sure Saddam's own people hung him as well. I'm pretty sure. Choice, uh, but to fight them and put an end for their violence. Uh, many civilians are dying, I understand this. Their blood is on the hands of Hamas, and Hamas only. You see, it's interesting you say that because a lot of pro-Palestinians who I've had on the show in the last two weeks don't accept that argument. They say the blood of the civilians in Gaza is exclusively on the hands of Israel, and that Israel's... I've heard at the Omni Liberal say multiple times now that... Um, oh, sorry, it's a mouthy Buddha tweet. I, Mouthy Buddha is like one of the most like well actually people. He's like worse than Taftaj on this. I've heard the admirable say multiple times now that Israel launched the six day war because the Arab states tried to invade Israel. Straightforward falsehood. Is anyone going to correct him on this? I'd be happy to do it, but he blocked me on Discord. I didn't block him. I just removed him because most of us were very obnoxious. Um, if he wanted to fight on this, my guess is going to be that um, I think the technical start of the six day war wasn't Egypt threatening to block. It's not the Suez Canal. There was a name for it in the, in, the, um, in the Sinai. There's a name for the fucking river that runs through there. What am I thinking of? Uh, but I think, Egypt, I think Egypt was threatening that they were gonna block all shipments through there. Um, was it, it might've been the Suez Canal, was it? The Tehran Canal, maybe it was the Suez? Or the Strait of Tehran, that might've been. Because the Suez Canal is way over in Egypt, I think, right? Um, but the, yeah, I think, when, I think when Egypt threatened that they were gonna block that, then I think Israel attacked Egypt preemptively because they saw a conflict coming. I'm, maybe this is what Malthy Buddha is talking about. That's my guess, but I don't know. But also, we're not at the Six Day War yet, so you know, wait for us to get there. That's all the way in the in the sixties, I think, right? Yeah, sixty-seven. Okay. Waged uh, a repressive occupation for many decades. Um, there's been a prison camp for Gazans for a long, long time, and that that has created the environment through which a terror group like Hamas can thrive and indeed win an election as they did in 2005. Do you buy into any of that? I mean, do you think that Israel has overreacted already to what happened to them? There are- Israel has not overreacted at all. They're fully within their right to defend themselves. That's my guess for what I'll say. Let's see, let's see. Human is, what is proportion when you have a terror attack like that on your people? My dude, the Strait of Tehran is the same thing as the Suez Canal. People. Look, since my childhood, uh, and I am hearing the stories from pro-Palestine and from those who are using what's so-called the Palestinian cause, they care the least for the Palestinian children and their future. You know, I, I am the legit, uh, legitimate representative of the Palestinian children. The child within me speaks. I don't want somebody coming from London or somebody coming from the other side of the world to tell me what is the struggle of the Palestinian children. The Palestinian children, the Palestinian society has been hijacked by these criminals. And anybody who takes side, uh, their side is participating in their crime. This is my answer to those people. Hold on. Ricky Bay, 4999, check out the latest episode of Breaking Points. They had Daryl Cooper of Marty Made podcast on and gave a lot of context on the conflict. No, I'm not. Let me read more, okay? 
Stop telling me to watch. Fuck, and you donated fifty dollars. Don't make me feel bad. Don't tell me to watch things or go whatever. I'm just let me read more first, okay? For the oh, map showing the Suez Canal and Tehran, or and the Strait of Tehran, not the same thing. The Gulf of Suez, the Suez Canal, and Tehran. There you go, I guess. This is the Strait of Tehran, I guess? The civilian casualties, etc. You know, first of all, Hamas is using, and it's very clearly, it's a fact that Hamas used civilians as human shields. It's a fact then it's a fact that Israel call and warn civilians to evacuate buildings before they strike them. But in the meantime, Hamas put roadblocks to stop civilians from evacuating to safe zones. Hamas single misfire killed hundreds of refugees taking shelter at a hospital and they blamed Israel. What are we talking about here? Israel is a democracy, Israel is accountable Israel is not thirsty for the Palestinian blood. In the meantime, Israel is capable of wiping out Arab capitals in seconds. Why Israel does not attempt to abuse its power? But why when the Arabs have just a little bit of power, couple of missiles, they misuse power by launching them at civilians and kill them in their living rooms? We have a fundamental problem and we need to stop blaming Israel. We invited this upon our heads and the rest of the world. If they don't know the reality on the ground, it's better than shut up. Mossab, your passion uh, and your anger is very palpable here and certainly very different to most of the pro-Palestinian voices I've had. And you know, I sense the Palestinian plight of its people is very much in your heart. Do you still have contact with, with any of your family? This is irrelevant right now. I don't have any contact with my family and I don't care anymore. You know, enough bloodshed and enough involvement from people who don't care. They're just uh, warriors on keyboard. You know, and they're just storming uh, world you, capitals bro. saying free Palestine, free Palestine. They don't know what the hell Palestine is. I am Palestine. And I say it's enough of Hamas. It's enough of the corrupt leaderships that they are killing our people. Misleading them to hell is enough of that. We don't want Palestinian state. I don't want Palestinian state. Palestinian children need education. They need security. They need life. This is what they need. They don't need another corrupt Arab regime. Is it possible to get rid of Hamas in the way that Israel is currently trying to do through uh, airstrike bombardments and, and it is planned now an imminent ground invasion? Is that the best way to do it? Or is there a danger of radicalizing a lot more young Palestinians to the Hamas cause in the process? Listen to this. We are going to remove Hamas from power. Remember my words, okay? And Hamas did not only bring the wrath of Israel over Gaza. Hamas brought the wrath of God. We are going to remove them from power and we are going to persecute their leaders and we are going to bring them, bring them to justice and the world will witness their punishment. And everyone who, who take their side today in this state of confusion, thinking that this is a joke, I tell those people that you're going to regret taking the side of Hamas. You are going to, take the, uh, to regret taking the side of those criminals who are uh, killing uh, the Palestinian people. Mossab, you were born in Ramallah. That's your home. Do you dream of going home one day? Is that something you still aspire to do? I prefer not to ask to answer this question. <laughs> I understand. Mossab, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Um, it's it's extraordinary to hear your story. And why why did I watch this? This is worthless. Okay, thank you, my Israeli friend. Okay. Um,